and we continue to play a significant coordination role between these agencies. But let me be clear, it is not the role of any government to direct law enforcement operations. It is the responsibility of the police of jurisdiction, and in this case, the Ottawa Police Service, to maintain public order and to uphold the rule of law. They must have the appropriate resources, and they do have the appropriate tools and authorities that they require to keep their communities safe. And in circumstances where the events exceed the capacity of the police service to respond as they are required to do, there are well-established authorities for the police to seek assistance. And as the federal government, we are here to provide support to local police, and we have responded affirmatively to every request for assistance that we have received to help strengthen the Ottawa Police Service's ability to protect the people of Ottawa. There has been also ongoing work among all of our, our, our federal departments to ensure that we are mobilizing all of the resources that are required and, and requested by the province of Ontario and the city of Ottawa to provide every support that is required. Yesterday, as many of you are aware, the city of Ottawa declared a state of emergency. And in response to this, the federal government is proposing to convene a trilateral table with municipal and provincial partners. I've reached out today to, to the, the, the Solicitor General for the province of Ontario and to the mayor of Ottawa to, to convene a table that will allow us to keep lines of communication open during what is a fluid and dynamic situation and to respond with speed and efficiency to meet the city's needs. Let me be very clear, however, that this is simply building upon the active and ongoing conversation, collaboration, and coordination that has taken place on every political level between our respective officials and will allow us to keep these lines of communication open. There has been open and active engagement for, from our senior public officials, the provincial senior public officials, and the city of Ottawa to provide support. We also know that there is close communication and collaboration between the municipal police services, provincial police services, and the RCMP. I would now like to take the opportunity to address those individuals who are still participating in this event. Many of the actions that have taken place over the course of this demonstration have been unlawful and, frankly, disrespectful to the rights and, and, and freedoms of all Canadians. It is well past the time to bring this protest to an end. Canada is a peaceful nation, and we often serve as an example of hope to countries around the world. And we look after our neighbours and we treat each other with respect in this country. We do not threaten or intimidate our fellow citizens. We do not desecrate the National War Memorial. We don't dishonour statues dedicated to national heroes. And we do not tolerate individuals who wave flags, riddled with symbols of hate and discrimination. The freedom to engage in lawful, peaceful assembly and process is, is a fundamental charter right. However, when an event is no longer peaceful, when the event is disrupting the lives and jeopardizing the livelihoods of fellow Canadians, local residents have been harassed, harassed for wearing masks, business owners have been forced to close out of concern for the safety of their staff, families with young children have been able to sleep due to the constant honking of horns. And this frankly needs to end. The last two years have been incredibly difficult for every single Canadian. The pandemic has impacted the mental health of Canadians in every part of the country. We've missed birthdays, holidays, and celebration with family and with friends. We've had to say goodbye to far too many loved ones over video calls, and people have felt alone, isolated, and scared. We all want this pandemic to be over. We have all made sacrifices, and we want to return to normal as quickly as possible, and we will get there. But the way forward is not by infringing upon the freedom and rights of your fellow Canadians. It's by being getting vaccinated. It's by doing your part to protect yourself and your community. I want to assure the people of Ottawa that we will continue to support the City of Ottawa and the Ottawa Police Service in their work as the police of jurisdiction. And I would like to extend my gratitude as well to all of the police services that are assisting in this effort. Thank you all very much. And I now invite my colleague, Minister Medicino, to, to say a few words. Thank you, Bill. Uh, bonjour tout le monde. And I too would like to recognize that I'm joining you virtually from the Indigenous Territories and the Algonquin people. Over the past weekend, a number of demonstrations took place across the country. Some were carried out peacefully and in accordance with the law. And this is thanks to local law enforcement, as well as residents and businesses who showed patience, understanding, and respect for the rule of law during those protests. 
The people of Ottawa, however, have had to endure significant disruption to their daily lives as a result of the ongoing convoy here. There have been numerous incidents of intimidation, harassment, violence, and hate. Many residents have been effectively held hostage in their own city, blockaded by an angry, loud, intolerant, and violent crowd. While everyone believes in the right to free speech, this convoy has crossed the line of acceptable conduct towards fellow Canadians many, many times. Now, there has been some progress over the last 12 hours, and there needs to be more progress and more quickly. I want to commend Ottawa Police Services for stepping up enforcement. Over 500 tickets late, charges late, criminal investigations ongoing, structures are coming down, and this is being safe, done safely and respectfully. In the weeks that follow, we'll need to be really clear that we can't find ourselves in a similar situation again. We're also very concerned about the ongoing situation at the Coots border crossing in Alberta, where a group of blockaders continues to impede access with important linkages to the United States. We are grateful to the work of the CBSA, the RCMP, and other officials to ensure that those lines of supply continue to flow. I want to be clear that there should be no differences across political parties in the way that we are dealing with this moment. It would be a terrible precedent to say that if you show up to the nation's capital with heavy equipment and blockade the capital city, that you can force reckless change in our public policy. It's been surprising that some who say they believe in law and order seem not to get this point. Mais pour l'instant, voici que nous faisons pour soutenir la vie. What are we doing to support police services in Ottawa? They're responsible for local law enforcement efforts. The federal government will support Ottawa Police Services as the situation evolves, the RCMP has approved additional resources. Following my call with Mayor Watson, I can confirm that the RCMP has received and approved request for additional resources. Following our request this weekend, other officers were made available. Since Sunday, more than 275 RCMP officers have been made available for Ottawa. The RCMP is discussing with the SPO, the SPA, and other police services to evaluate next steps in terms of its support based on the evolving situation. I am requesting operational updates throughout the events and daily reports on the situation. We will ensure that we can restore public order. I have been discussing with my provincial counterparts, and I've also spoken with Ontario's uh, Minister Jones, Minister Kenny, and uh, the Minister in Alberta. I've also spoken with Mayor Watson in Ottawa.